Phoenix Wright! Phoenix Wright is a defense-oriented wall breaker who can tear down his opponent's defenses and force the truth to the surface with a variety of powerful counters and armored attacks. While he has all the evidence he needs to win his case, Phoenix's slow and methodical playstyle can leave him as a sitting duck to those that excel at spacing and mid-range damage. And once you top that with several moves that rely on countering incoming attacks and picking your opponents carefully, you've got a character who will take time to approach and even more time to master. As a Phoenix Wright player, you are designed to hold your ground and show your opponent no quarter once you've discovered a hole in their testimony, lowering their morale over time and driving them to make a hasty mistake. A hasty mistake that will undoubtedly be countered by the perfect piece of evidence. Phoenix Wright is a large humanoid character, his size and build being similar to that of Cloud. 
As one can easily discern from his home franchise, Phoenix Wright isn't a fighter at heart, at least not in the physical combat sense. Where other characters fight with fists, magic, and sharp weapons, Phoenix will fight using a weapon that's just as deadly if used properly. The truth. Be it through carefully written documents, witness testimonies, or a record full of evidence, Phoenix Wright's way of fighting is not so much accidental as it attacks the opponent's morale instead of their body. The crippling effect of guilt will shred opponent's health bars and turn around battles just when they look like they're at their lowest point. And once there's nowhere left to hide, Phoenix will deliver the final blow and secure a verdict. As a result, Phoenix Wright's victory message will be changed from Game to Guilty, using the same font as the verdict messages in Ace Attorney. Also, while he's not often cited as a fighter, Phoenix Wright has indeed made appearances in other combat-related titles, including his appearance as one of the game's best assists in Quadra Cross Zone 2, and, more notably, his legendary appearance in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. While I'm a huge fan of UMBC3 Phoenix Wright and have plenty of experience playing the character, the Phoenix Wright of this moveset is designed to be his own thing, pulling as little as possible from his appearance in said game, although there are still some bits of that character's design that simply just cannot be ignored. This design for Phoenix Wright is mainly oriented around the courtroom side of Ace Attorney, with the acquisition of evidence being less of an investigation-styled romp and more of an item that can be picked up and used immediately, almost like new evidence being added as a result of pressing the witness during their testimony. Long story short, short, Phoenix Wright does not have any additional forms or stances in this moveset. In terms of mobility options, Phoenix Wright has two jumps, lacking any additional movement options. As previously stated, Phoenix Wright's main way of combat is less about hurting the opponent physically and more about harming their credibility by overwhelming them with factual evidence and agonizing guilt. While this is the case, however, no one goes into court and immediately wins their desired verdict. No, cases in court need to be built up gradually, it growing stronger and stronger until the point where its evidence cannot be ignored, and Phoenix Wright's character mechanic follows this mindset to a T. Endearingly referred to as pressing the witness, Phoenix's playstyle is all about breaking down his opponent's defenses and turning their strength against them by crippling their offense with powerful counters, armor, and an unwavering desire to see justice dealt. And by countering enemy attacks, successfully using your evidence, and dealing damage in general, Phoenix will increase his overall damage through his character mechanics resource bar, the Turnabout Gauge. Displayed on what's referred to as the Attorney HUD, this bar will gradually fill up as the game progresses, with regular attacks increasing the bar by a small amount and certain abilities increasing the bar by a decent chunk. This gauge will be broken into three segments, each segment completed adding an extra attribute or mechanic to some of Phoenix's attacks. When one segment is filled, Phoenix's side and down special will receive a new attribute, increasing their damage and effectiveness while also increasing how much each ability fills the turnabout gauge. When two segments are filled, Phoenix's grounded attacks will gain a small armor window at the beginning of each move, while his smash attacks will become fully armored. Phoenix's run and air speed will also slightly increase. Finally, when all three segments are active, Phoenix Wright will officially enter Turnabout Mode. This mode adding extra range to Phoenix's normals while also greatly increasing his overall shield pressure, making it much harder for opponents to fight him straight on. If the player can play well, then the effects of Turnabout Mode can be kept up almost indefinitely, but the chances of that happening are very, very rare. You see, for while Phoenix can gain turnabout charge by performing attacks, he's also capable of losing said charge if he's hit by incoming attacks, each hit lowering the turnabout gauge by a small amount, no matter how little damage the attack does. However, if there's one thing that can deal huge damage to Phoenix's turnabout gauge, it's Phoenix himself. Namely, the misuse of evidence while in the middle of battle. Failing to use a piece of evidence successfully will lower the turnabout gauge by a small amount. But if Phoenix's evidence is either interrupted or countered, he will lose a large chunk of his turnabout gauge, much like you would receive a penalty in Ace Attorney if you present the wrong piece of evidence, the same explosion effect being heard when a piece of evidence is countered. These are the basics you need to know when it comes to Phoenix Wright's character mechanic. But while the turnabout gauge is one of the attorney HUD's main features, there is one other thing to talk about, and that's evidence. 
In Smash Brothers, evidence is one of your greatest tools for helping build your case. Each piece having their own unique properties that can serve a purpose in battle. Phoenix will start each fight with a single piece of evidence, with all other pieces having to be acquired manually throughout the match, there being a grand total of 7 different pieces of evidence that Phoenix can pick up. New evidence can be acquired by forcing it out of opponents, namely causing them to drop it after they take a certain amount of damage. Let's learn a bit more about these unique items, shall we? The first piece of evidence that Phoenix can acquire is the photo, this simple picture being one of the two items Phoenix can start the match with. As people tend to say, a picture is worth a thousand words, and a thousand words is seemingly more powerful than any projectile. And as a result, when the photo is presented, it will reflect incoming projectiles back at their caster at roughly 1.5 times the speed and roughly 1.5 times the original move's knockback. Catching your opponent in this vital state of weakness will greatly increase your turnabout gauge. The second piece of evidence that Phoenix can acquire is the knife. A simple short blade with a black handle and the other piece of evidence that Phoenix can start the match with. If there's one thing that's common knowledge, it's the fact that knives are very sharp, so much so that it's advised to not touch the blade with your bare hands. As a result, this item will counter physical attacks with heavy damage, in turn also greatly increasing the turnabout gauge. The third piece of evidence that Phoenix can acquire is the cell phone, this long-range communication device sporting a fashionable silver samurai ringtone when it goes off. When presented, the cell phone will release a ringing burst of outward damage that will increase in power the further away the opponent is from Phoenix when used. The amount of turnabout charge acquired will also vary depending on the opponent's distance. The fourth piece of evidence that Phoenix can acquire is the fishing rod, this flimsy old rod being the personal property of Detective Gumshoe. When presented, all opponents within a certain radius of Phoenix will be pulled in close to his position, damaging them in the process and filling the turnabout gauge by a small amount. The fifth piece of evidence that Phoenix can acquire is the autopsy report, an order document depicting the victim of the crime in question. And don't worry, it's up to date. When presented, this utility item will release a pulse of energy out in front of it. It's stopping all projectiles in midair and turning them into traps that can be triggered by both Phoenix and his opponent. The amount of turnabout gauge acquired by this move will depend on the strength of the projectile that it stops. The sixth piece of evidence that Phoenix can acquire is the ornate jar, this decorated pottery having a striking resemblance to a certain police mascot if you look at it from a specific angle. When presented, this item will absorb up to three physical strikes, the jar then shattering on the final hit and cutting the opponent that struck it, giving them a damage over time effect. The jar will take some time to put back together, it taking 7 seconds for it to reform. But in that time, the player can still present the jar's broken shards in order to inflict the opponent with a damage over time effect on hit. Finally, the seventh piece of evidence that Phoenix can acquire is the Thinker Statue, an infamous piece of evidence featured in multiple cases in the first Ace Attorney that's secretly a clock. When presented, the statue will release an outward pulse as it chimes, slowing down time for opponents in its area of effect for a short period of time. If the player manages to time the beginning of the Thinker's ring with an incoming attack, then this slow effect will be greatly increased. Now that you fully understand the intricacies of Phoenix Wright and the main idea behind this playstyle, let's now move on to discussing the attacks that make up said playstyle and begin talking about his normals. <laughs> Wright's normals are mainly comprised of attacks utilizing factual evidence and printed documents, as Phoenix's words are his greatest weapon. However, while an attorney's greatest weapon is his evidence, it couldn't hurt to bring along a bit of help. As a result, Maya Fey will accompany Phoenix Wright in battle, Maya moving in the background much like Pokemon Trainer and holding on to important items such as Phoenix's court record. During certain moments, Maya will also step into the foreground to help Phoenix fight, although her combat abilities have a more hands-on approach than Phoenix's. Phoenix's neutral combo is Court Statement, an endless combo strike that will have Phoenix reading off of a document to the court, tapping the paper as he reads and referencing one of his main animations from the Ace Attorney series. As he reads off the document, waves of paper will fly out in front of Phoenix, dealing rapid damage to any opponent within a certain radius. And once the endless combo concludes, Phoenix will stick his arm out and strike his opponent with the held document, knocking them back with a decent amount of force. While the paper strikes are disjointed, their range is rather short. Phoenix's forward and up tilt utilize an attack that he can perform in Marvel vs. Capcom 3, which is known as paperwork. 
For this attack, instead of reading off the opponent's wrongdoings, Phoenix would prefer to let his opponent be overwhelmed by their actions firsthand, namely by tossing a wave of papers both out in front of him and up over his head, dealing rapid damage before knocking the opponent away. This long-range attack counts as a projectile, and while it's possible for opponents to deflect it, it cannot be reflected back at Phoenix. I guess that while it's possible to deny the things you've done, it's impossible to run away from your actions. Phoenix's down tilt is keen observation, Phoenix sticking his arm out as he points straight ahead, a small magnifying glass icon appearing in front of him and flashing orange. Both Phoenix's arm and the magnifying glass will deal different damage percents, with Phoenix even having unique ending animations depending on whether or not he manages to land the attack. It should also be mentioned that, much like UMVC3, Phoenix's attacks will have long intricate ending animations that can be cancelled early by performing another action, adding on to his distinct combat style. Phoenix's dash attack is the first move where Maya makes an active appearance in his moveset, this attack being referred to as Watch Out Nick. With this, Maya will run up behind Phoenix in order to try and get his attention, all before tripping and sliding forward along the ground as Phoenix watches with an uneasy look on his face. A reference to one of Phoenix's investigation stance specials from UMVC3, this attack is completely disjointed, as Phoenix will stop far before Maya slides, and while the opponent is capable of hitting Maya to interrupt her attack, hitting her will not harm Phoenix. When the attack concludes, she will quickly dust herself off and move back into the background. For his getup attack, Phoenix will spin around and attempt to pick up his drop documents, all while pointing forward for his ledge attack. For his smash attacks, Phoenix and Maya will both attack together, utilizing their pressing desire to see justice for all as they make their way through their trial and the tribulations that come along with it. Phoenix's forward smash is Attorney's Pride, both Phoenix and Maya pointing out in front of themselves and creating a huge burst of energy that will fly forward, similar to the way Phoenix's point is shown to work in the Ace Attorney anime. With this, the opponent will sustain heavy damage and be launched away, all before Phoenix and Maya share a small high five. Phoenix's up smash is to greater heights, both Phoenix and Maya raising a finger to the air and creating a blinding light above them. Opponents hit by this attack will take rapid damage before being flung away, its startup being surprisingly quick and ending with Maya encouraging Nick to keep going. Finally, Phoenix's down smash is no corner left unturned, Phoenix and Maya pointing in opposite directions and emitting a shining flash from their fingers, dealing heavy damage and launching the opponent away with serious force. After the attack concludes, the dialogue can be one of several things, from Maya and Phoenix talking about how close they are to winning the case, to even Maya talking about grabbing lunch once the fight is over. Phoenix has never really been considered much of an aerial fighter. Even in UMVC3, most of his best abilities are saved for grounded combat and he even shows signs of visual fear when performing a super jump. Still, no matter how high in the air you go, Justice is always sure to follow right behind you. Phoenix's neutral air is Take a Look at This, which will have Phoenix read off a document while falling through the air. As he reads, he'll become surrounded in a wave of papers that will rapidly deal damage to nearby opponents before launching them away. This wide hitting attack is also completely disjointed, protecting Phoenix from incoming attacks, although it might not protect him from sword users. Phoenix's forward air is Pressing the Opening, Phoenix stretching his arm outward and striking his opponent with a set of papers in his hand. While it's decently fast, it's not overly powerful, at least not on its own, for the player can input this attack twice in order to have Phoenix perform the move again with his other arm, launching the opponent away with a solid amount of overall damage. Phoenix's up air is I got it, an explanation mark appearing above his head as he deals damage above him. The explanation mark's damage is completely disjointed and will deal more damage if the opponent is hit by the move's initial startup. Phoenix's back air is turning things around, Phoenix turning around in mid-air and striking using a shining finger point. This move will deal average damage and knockback normally, but if the opponent is hit by the attack's sweet spot, that being the gleaming flash that appears as Phoenix points, they will take massive damage and will be launched with heavy force, this version of the move being one of Phoenix's best kill moves. 
Finally, Phoenix's down air is a chew. Allergies. Phoenix laying out a powerful sneeze that will spike opponents on contact and deal a large amount of damage. A reference to both Ace Attorney and UMBC3, Phoenix's sneezes are so powerful that they've been shown to launch enemies high up into the air, this attribute being utilized in UMBC3 for his launch attacks. Here in Smash, Phoenix's sneeze is not only powerful enough to launch foes straight down, but will also momentarily halt his downward momentum. will perform a ranged grab by utilizing an item that was key to solving one of his biggest cases in the original Ace Attorney, the Metal Detector. Enemies within effective range will be pulled in close to Phoenix and stuck to the Metal Detector, Maya providing the pummel by punching the opponent twice and dealing minimal damage. For his throws, Phoenix will utilize a variety of different abilities, but with a consistent theme, unintentional outcomes. From outside help to a complete slip-up, Phoenix isn't really looking to throw his opponent. He's looking to defend his client, aka you, the player. So all outcomes weren't what he expected when he got them tied up. Phoenix's forward throw is Silver Samurai Maya Flurry. Maya suddenly rushing the opponent and hitting them rapidly with her arms before they're launched away at the end of Maya's run. Phoenix watching in the distance with sweat dripping down his face. A reference to one of Phoenix's supers from UMBC3, this attack serves as Phoenix's kill throw. Phoenix's up throw is Flying Samurai, the metal detector pulling in what appears to be an air tank underneath his opponent's feet before it goes off, smashing into them and launching them up into the air at incredible speed. Phoenix and Maya will look on in awe as the opponent is launched, and in terms of launch power, this throw can kill at higher percents. Phoenix's down throw is Slip Up, Phoenix stepping forward in order to try and press the opponent before he accidentally slips on a banana peel, falling down on his opponent and bouncing them off the floor in the process. A reference to one of Phoenix's command normals from UMBC3, Phoenix will take a moment to get off the ground once the throw ends, meaning it might not be the best for setting up combos. Finally, Phoenix's back throw is Watch Out Missile, featuring the ever-trustworthy and always hungry K-9 police unit, Missile. With this, Missile will charge in from the opposite side of the screen and run right into the opponent, launching them out of Phoenix's grasp with decent force and dealing above average damage. When the throw concludes, Phoenix will bend down to pick up Missile, all before passing him over to Maya before he disappears. <laughs> While each of Phoenix's normals play a part in his overall game plan, his specials are the place where he will make full use of his most important items, namely his collected evidence and his keen sense of observation. It's time to go to town on your opponent using your skills as an attorney, or in this sense, go to court. Phoenix's neutral special is broken into three different moves, with the move you get being dependent on both how long you hold the B button for and where Phoenix is standing, these being Court Record, Gather Evidence, and Present Evidence. Normally, tapping the B button will have Phoenix perform Present Evidence, in which he'll show off his currently equipped piece of evidence, while holding the B button will have Phoenix perform Court Record, Phoenix opening up the record and looking through his list of evidence. This evidence will appear in a circular menu around Phoenix, much like Shulk's Monado Arts, the player then being able to choose a new piece of evidence by moving the stick onto said piece and then releasing the B button. Also, as a nice nod to Ace Attorney, choosing a new piece of evidence will play the evidence acquisition jingle. Gather evidence, however, is a bit different, for it can only be performed once the player is standing over a glowing mark on the ground. When Phoenix is standing over or close to a piece of evidence, a small magnifying glass icon will appear above his head, and once the B button is pressed, he will bend down to pick up the mysterious object off the ground and put it in his pocket. A portrait of the item Phoenix just acquired will then appear above his head. Phoenix's side special will utilize a unique ability that was introduced in Ace Attorney just for all, a way for Phoenix to delve into his opponent's psyche and unlock the truth by force. Cyclox. This command grab will have Phoenix Wright outstretch his hand in front of him, a glowing Magatama appearing as his opponent is held in place by chains, a red lock then being visible at the epicenter of the chain mass. At early points in the battle, there will only be one Cyclock, which will deal a moderate amount of damage. But as the turnabout gauge rises, the amount of Cyclocks will gradually increase until there's a maximum of three locks, which, once unlocked, will deal tremendous damage and greatly increase the turnabout gauge in the 
process. The player can also choose which direction the opponent flies when the Cyclops are broken, launching them either straight away, up into the air, or behind Phoenix by holding the analog stick in their desired direction. And when used in the air, the command grab can even be angled so the opponent is launched straight down. When it comes to the idea of a recovery special for Phoenix Wright, it honestly feels like a lot of creators hit some sort of roadblock when it comes to designing ideas. There's been a couple of funny and referential ideas that I've seen floating around the internet, such as climbing a stepladder or utilizing the dead spirits of past characters, but I feel like I might have found something that will work, even if it might not entirely make sense timeline-wise. This is Trucy's Magic Show. This recovery will have Trucy Wright, Phoenix's adoptive daughter, appear in a puff of smoke and put her magic on full display, lifting her father up with magic before making him disappear with a snap of her fingers, all before reappearing in a different location and scrambling for the closest surface. While this attack won't deal any damage, it will push opponents back if they're too close to Phoenix when he reappears. And like most teleport recoveries, this move will snap to ledges. When her father reappears, Trucy will give a peace sign to the camera and disappear in a puff of smoke. Now, as someone who is either a fan of Ace Attorney or knows anything about Phoenix Wright as a character, you're probably noticing a distinct lack of a certain ability that Phoenix Wright is known for, his iconic speech bubbles. While I understand that these have always been featured as a major part of Phoenix's character, I also feel that a majority of the ways that people use it in moveset design for Smash Brothers doesn't match the way it's meant to be used in Ace Attorney. When you get an objection off, it's meant to be a massive deal, something that will lead into Phoenix drooling into his opponent with undeniable facts, which is exactly what his down special is meant to be. This is cross-examination. In the Ace Attorney series, the cross-examination is Phoenix's greatest tool in the courtroom, allowing the player to break down the witness's testimony and either press for more details or submit evidence contradicting their statement, leading to the iconic OBJECTION! In Smash, cross-examination is a multi-purpose counter-attack that will have Phoenix take a thoughtful pose, hand resting on his chin as he tries to get a read on his opponent's movements. If Phoenix is hit while in the middle of this animation, an explanation mark will appear above his head as the opponent is pushed back slightly, all before winding up and delivering one of his iconic lines, the one you get depending on how much the turnabout gauge has been charged. At minimal charge, Phoenix will counter his opponent with Hold It, a powerful attack that, while it will deal a decent chunk of damage, it will deal minimal knockback, pushing and leaving them wide open to another potential attack. Phoenix will also perform Hold It against projectiles at all levels of charge, causing them to dissipate and greatly increasing his turnabout gauge on contact. Once one of the three turnabout gauge segments has been filled, Phoenix will instead perform his iconic Objection, this attack dealing far more damage and knockback than the previous iteration. On top of that, this move can be activated immediately from a perfect shield, which will always have Phoenix use Objection regardless of his turnabout gauge. Finally, once the turnabout gauge is full and Phoenix is looking to close this case for good, the effects of cross-examination will change completely, going from a counter-attack to a heavily armored attack that will counter both physical and projectile attacks with his powerful speech bubble, take that! His arm length greatly increasing as a shining mimicry of his finger point will manifest from his attack, much like the way Phoenix's heavy attacks will have their properties changed in UMVC3 once he hits turnabout mode. This is Phoenix Wright's single most powerful attack Attack, but successfully landing it will drain the turnabout gauge by a single segment, immediately ending the turnabout mode and forcing the player to refill the gauge again. Next is the final smash, and when it comes to the Ace Attorney series, there's no better way for Phoenix Wright to finish his opponents than by pushing them to their breaking point, leaving them nowhere to go and nowhere to hide from their actions, which leads to the series' iconic meltdowns. This is Ace Attorney. To start this final smash, Phoenix will call the opponent to the stand. The witness stand rising up from the ground below the opponent's feet as they're locked into the cinematic final smash. Only one opponent can be hit by this smash at a time, but the one hit will be in for a world of pain. Once caught, the scene will transition to the iconic Ace Attorney courtroom, Phoenix Wright standing behind the defense's desk and laying out all the facts, presenting the evidence necessary to put them away for their crimes. With one final take that, the opponent will explode, the witness stand being blown apart as the opponent is launched scoured at incredible speed. This is, of course, not only a reference to the previously mentioned meltdown scene 
means of Ace Attorney, but the move of the same name used as Phoenix Wright's level 3 super in UMBC3. It's truly an iconic moment and one of the game's best finishers. Even if the game originally launched with Phoenix's VA saying, take this instead of take that. No, I don't understand how they let that slip in either. While the Ace Attorney series has a plethora of triumphant songs that can serve as Phoenix's victory theme, I decided to go with the victory theme of the very first Ace Attorney title. For not only is it iconic, but it's a heartwarming track that truly does make you feel proud about the hard work you put in to win your battle. number one will feature Phoenix standing behind the defense desk, all before performing his iconic finger point and letting out a loud objection. Maya will also be featured beside Phoenix, a confident expression on her face as she knows they've won their case. Victory animation number two will feature Phoenix posing confidently as the guilty verdict is declared, all before remarking about the fact that, regardless of one's power, speeds, or smarts, there's no greater strength than the truth. Finally, Victory Animation number 3 will be a reference to his victory pose from UMBC3, with Phoenix rubbing the back of his head and smiling a wide smile as Maya throws confetti up into the air, a reference to the way confetti would rain down once a verdict was given in Ace Attorney. Tom number 1 will have Phoenix Wright show off his attorney's badge, smiling proudly as he does so. While it might not do anything, it shows his opponent what side of the law the Phoenix stands on. That, and it's just fun to randomly show people your attorney's badge even when it doesn't serve a purpose. Taunt number two will have Phoenix pull up a document and look it over, tapping his chin with his other hand as he claims he has spotted a contradiction. This is a reference to one of Phoenix's attack animations from UMVC3 as well as a line that plays when he taunts. Finally, taunt number three will have Phoenix strike a confident pose, hands on his hips as he smiles proudly. This is a reference to the taunt that Phoenix uses when in turnabout mode in UMVC3 and one of his main poses from Ace Attorney. <laughs> Phoenix Wright's colors are mainly references to both the different outfits he has worn throughout the Ace Attorney franchise and the various characters that Phoenix has interacted with throughout the series. Maya will also receive alternate colors based on side characters throughout the Ace Attorney franchise. Color number one is Phoenix's standard appearance in the first three Ace Attorney titles, featuring his iconic blue suit and red tie and slick back, spiky hair. Maya will also be in her standard appearance in the Ace Attorney trilogy, featuring her purple and white medium outfits and long black hair. Color number two will have Phoenix wearing a red suit and white tie, a reference to his friend and rival, prosecutor Miles Edgeworth. Maya will have her black hair changed to brown, while her outfit will change to a mixture of white and blue. This being a reference to Emma Sky, a side character that helps out Phoenix when Maya is absent in episode 5 of the first Ace Attorney game. Color number 3 will have Phoenix wearing a beige and green suit, all while his hair is changed to a snow white. A reference to Prosecutor Godot from Ace Attorney, Trials and Tribulations. Maya will also be wearing a black and white outfit while keeping her black hair, a reference to her older sister, Mia Fey. Color number 4 will change Phoenix's outfit to the outfit he's seen wearing in both Dual Death Destinies and Spirit of Justice, featuring a blue open-cut suit and a white undershirt and tie. Maya will also don her Spirit of Justice outfit, featuring a white Chandler's robe and purple overcoat along with a white cowl. Color number 5 will have Phoenix donning the colors of his good friend and fellow defense attorney, Apollo Justice, changing his blue suit to a red and black one with a white undershirt. Maya will also don the colors of Athena Sykes, an assistant of both Phoenix and Apollo in Dual Destinies and Spirit of Justice, giving Maya brown hair while changing her outfit to a mixture of yellow, white, and blue. Color number 6 will have Phoenix don a black and white suit with a white undershirt and black tie, a reference to Prosecutor Simon Blackquill, the main prosecutor in Dual Destinies. Maya will have her outfit changed to a variation of black, pink, and white while her cowl is changed to a navy blue, a reference to Kay Faraday from Investigations Miles Edgeworth. 
Finally, for colors 7 and 8, both Phoenix and Maya will receive unique outfits apart from the ones they usually wear in the Ace Attorney series. Color number 7 will give Phoenix his college outfit seen in the first trial of Trials and Tribulations, the same outfit that was used as his alternate costume in UMVC 3, while Maya will wear a schoolgirl's outfit, a reference to a piece of artwork featured in the Ace Attorney art book. Then there's color number 8, which will feature the outfit that Phoenix wore in Apollo Justice Ace Attorney while Maya will be wearing her wedding outfit from Spirit of Justice. Also, when Kirby absorbs Phoenix, he'll gain a copy of Phoenix's hair and gain access to present evidence. The piece of evidence Kirby presents being the same as the one in the Phoenix player's active slot when he was absorbed. When it comes to companies that seem to have a second home on Nintendo consoles, nobody fits that moniker better than Capcom, with franchises like Mega Man being a major star on the NES, while Ace Attorney was a big deal on both the GBA and the DS. I honestly did believe that the chances of us seeing Phoenix Wright actually make it into Smash Ultimate were quite high, especially since there is mysteriously no content from that franchise to be found in the game. No spirits, no spirit events, no costumes, no nothing. It all seems like it was a perfect lead-in for Ace Attorney's introduction into the franchise. But alas, it just wasn't meant to be. Still, just because he didn't make it this time doesn't mean there isn't a possibility for him to join in the future. And now that many iconic franchises have become a part of the Smash family, it feels like Ace Attorney might be one of the frontrunners for the next Smash title. Only time will tell, but something tells me it's only a matter of time until we finally get to voice an objection in Smash Bros. If you like what you saw, feel free to like and subscribe, for not only is there more coming in the future, but you'll be able to check out the videos that came out before this one. Also, follow me over on Twitter to keep up to date on what's coming next, as well as be the first to see any extra content I create outside of my video schedule. Also, if you like these movesets and are interested in having your own custom moveset for your Dream Smash Brothers character, consider becoming a member of my Patreon, where you can not only get a moveset of your own every month, but also gain access to exclusive content you won't find anywhere else online. That's all for now, so until next time, take care, stay safe, and remember to have a good one.